Well, Dipti Kalohan joins me now on set for a look through the papers at this hour. And Dipti, we're starting uh, in uh, Italy, where uh, Matteo Salvini has come uh, under fire, facing the music over a secret Russian oil deal. Well, opposition lawmakers in Italy are calling for a parliamentary inquiry. They want Matteo Salvini to explain himself. It all um, really unraveled this week with a report from the website BuzzFeed uh, that says they have an audio recording from last year in which a deal uh, was uh, sealed between a in which a Russian energy company would sell fuel to an Italian energy company at a difference and at a discount, and part of the difference would go towards Matteo Salvini's Northern League party. Uh, the affair just got bigger. That's what Il Fatto Quotidiano says on its front page. Um, Italian prosecutors have now opened an investigation into international corruption. And that has, of course, prompted a pretty damning uh, editorial from one uh, Italian daily. Well, La Repubblica's ed editors today say somebody has to tell Matteo Salvini that he has a duty before the Italian people to explain himself about this, quote, Russian affair. Um, furthermore, well, what they really want to know is how did Salvini not know about this secret meeting that took place with the Russians? If he did know, he's lying about it. If he didn't know, that means that his uh, team or his uh, close aides are doing some pretty dirty business behind his back. And that's that's not a good look either. Uh, there's an interesting piece from The Atlantic in which a website says the intrigue is not really about whether the deal was struck or not. Um, what's interesting about this is, is that it shows the, quote, incontrovertible if shadowy aspects of Russian reach into European politics. Um, Salvini, in any case, Salvini is not likely to be hurt by the scandal because it's unlikely to sway his fervent supporters. Now, here in France, there are new revelations known from the uh, scandal now known as a Lobstergate. That's, of course, involving the French ecology uh, minister, François de Rugy. De Rougy is half-baked. That's what Libération says on its front page. Uh, the ecology minister is accused, uh, was accused initially of hosting lavish lobster and champagne parties on the taxpayer's dime. Uh, then came uh, that he was uh, accusations that he occupied social housing in his home constituency, which he says he didn't know about. His cabinet director was fired yesterday over a social housing uh, apartment that she had for 12 years but didn't use. Then we learned that François de Rougy is also accused of several thousands of euros uh, worth of renovations on a government-appointed apartment. Um, Le Parisien has now poured oil on the fire with new revelations, uh, alleging that a third chauffeur was uh, used by uh, De Rougy and his family, uh, that uh, they took out extensive renovations on a parliamentary residence uh, to make room for his kids, and his wife now being accused of buying a gold hairdryer for 499 euros on the taxpayer dime. She says she left the hairdryer at the National Assembly. Such a shame for such a very expensive hairdryer. <laughs> anyway, um, to Australia now, where the, the country's iconic uh, landmark, of course, that big red rock, uh, Uluru, is now uh, facing a tourism rush, rush, which is, of course, much to the dismay of many locals there. It's on the front of The Guardian Australia today, Thomas. Uh, the tourists are rushing to climb Uluru because there's a ban that'll take place um, uh, this October. It's a sacred indigenous site, um, and Aboriginals in the past have urged tourists not to climb the rock, but they still do it anyway. Uh, um, locals are now outraged over reports that visitors have been trespassing, illegally camping out there, and also uh, dumping trash uh, near the heritage-listed site. The climb is also a perilous trip. I mean, um, there have been deaths in the past. This photo on the front page of The Guardian is an eerie reminder of another picture we've been seeing in the press recently. That's those uh, human traffic jams on Mount Everest. Um, Uluru also is uh, very sacred to Aboriginals because uh, they believe that's where the shapers of the world, the early Aboriginal ancestors, first, uh, well, walked, walked on that earth. OK, a spot of lighter news now, and I have to read this uh, correctly. The <laughs> rock legends Metallica are now venturing into the, the somewhat docile world of children's <laughs> literature. That's right. Uh, the rock legends are hitting middle age, and so they're chilling out a bit. Uh, nothing else matters but chill, children's literature, it appears. They're releasing an illustrated uh, kids' book out this November detailing the band's history from A to Z. It'll detail things like their cover album, Garage Days, to the 1986 uh, album Master of Puppets, which is widely considered one of their best. Uh, parts of the proceeds of the book will go to the uh, band's charities tackling hunger and underprivileged communities. And finally, one renowned French chef wants his French Alps restaurant to be removed from the prestigious uh, Michelin Guide. Adipti, tell us why. 
Celebrity chef Marc Vera, he runs La Maison des Bois. It's a, a very uh, picturesque restaurant overlooking Mont Blanc. Uh, this year, his restaurant was demoted from three to two stars. Vera saying he's been really depressed since then, and he's accusing Michelin Guide judges of the ultimate insult, Thomas, that he used English cheddar in his souffle and not Roblochon, Beaufort, and Tum, the Shock cheese <laughs> that's native uh, to the Savoie region where his restaurant is. Even more insulting because he prides himself on what he calls botanical cooking. Eggs uh, from his own chickens, milk from his own cows, wild herbs from around the uh, restaurant, found uh, around the restaurant. He's now uh, accusing Michelin judges of knowing nothing about cooking, and he's demanded that they remove his restaurant from their guide, which they're refusing to do for the moment. So the uh, food scandal continues. Okay, Diptyka Laurent, thank you very much. And that's it for this spin through the papers. To rewatch this and other press reviews, please feel free to visit our website. The address there is usual www.france24.com forward slash en.